Okay, this is the story about the horse that put me in the hospital. This was on a big ranch I worked on out west uh, quite a long time ago now, but this horse's name was Band-Aid, and it was one of the six or seven horses that they assigned me. Uh, as you know, we ride every day and cover miles and miles moving cows and stuff, so you have one horse basically for each day of the week. So one of those horses was Band-Aid. And when they assigned Band-Aid to me, they said, yeah, we named him that because everybody who has ever been assigned this horse, he has put them in the hospital one way or the other. And I'm thinking, oh, great. So one morning I am riding Band-Aid and I'm checking this pasture and it was kind of on the top of a it was kind of on the top of a hill with a downward slope about 30 degrees and I mean we're talking a massive hill but there was some old uh there was some old barbed wire fence and I mean really old like a hundred years old and it was bordering kind of where I needed to go to get to the cows that I needed to get to to gather them and push them down into the bottom of this hill where the corner of the pasture was, and that's where the corrals were. So the this ranch I worked on, the people, the people that were there, they they would trot their horses at full speed right across old wadded piles of down fence of barbed wire, and they would not think anything of it. And I had only done it a few times, but I was like scared to death to just trot a horse, especially one like that, over a bunch of old down fence. And they told me just, you know, the first time I did it, they said, remember, as long as you keep them trotting really fast, you it's fine. Okay, well, this was the first time I was out by myself, and I didn't have anybody to go in front of me to kind of prove to myself that everything was going to be okay. So like an idiot, I said, okay, I'm not going to trot over this down fence. I'm going to just bring him up to it and stop him. And I'm just going to have him kind of do one step at a time. Bad, bad, bad idea. These horses had shoes on. It was really rocky country. And his, his shoes had just a little bit of an overhang off of his back heel on all four feet. So that little bit of an overhang. Okay, well, right when I had him step, start to step through that, there was a piece that was kind of buried in the dirt, but it was still tight. And as he stepped on it and put his weight on it, it made that screeching noise. If you've ever heard wire get pulled really tight, really suddenly, it's a kind of a uh, really awful screeching noise. Right when he stepped on it, it made that noise. And then he kind of, he didn't really wig out, but he kind of just sucked back a little bit. And as he took a step back, move kitty, we're telling, we're telling a story here. Come here. So, so as he started to come back, he picked up his foot and, and drew it back. And then that one of those strands caught on that little heel off of his shoe then it went really bad. Right as he pulled it, some of the old fence posts and some of the fence over here to the right kind of got pulled towards him with the brush. At that point, he totally panicked. And he, he jumped to the left really hard and spun all the way around, almost 360 degrees. But right when he was pointed to my right, directly down this hill that had rocks and just not a good hill in the first place, he just took off running down that hill and bucking. After about, after he ran about 10 feet, all of the wire came loose from his shoes and everything. So all of that was in the free and clear. Well, when he jumped around and when he, when he spun around and bolted down the hill and started bucking, I had already blown my right stirrup or lost my right stirrup. So I was already kind of trying to get myself back in the middle as he's running down this hill and just bucking, right? So I wasn't able to do it, obviously. And I fell off the right side of him as he's running. And then my left foot was hung in the stirrup. So as my left foot came up, my stirrup fender came across and was basically laying across the saddle, right? Like where you would sit. And my left foot was hung and I was hanging off the, the right side of him. And this is where it got really scary. Not the fact that I came off, but 
my foot was hung and he was basically kind of bucking and kicking and dragging me down this hill. And his hooves were so close to the back of my head, I could feel the wind and I could hear every time they whisked by. This all happened really fast. I only got drug about 15 or 20 feet, but it felt like five minutes. And I remember thinking as I'm, as I'm trying to kick and roll around and get my foot loose, I remember thinking, man, if he just, all he has to do is catch my head on the back stroke of his feet and he could clip me, knock me out. There were other people around, but remember this is like, this is like, this pasture is like 10 miles by 10 miles. It's huge. And, uh, you know, I was like, man, I could be laying here unconscious. Nobody would find me for hours or anything like that. Well, luckily, uh, the guy that was basically in charge of the next section over gathering over, uh, over here, he saw the whole thing happen. So once he saw me getting drugged, he immediately started running his horse at full speed over to where I was. And he was a long ways away, but he got there eventually. Uh, so it did something really bad to my left knee. So I come off and I'm just laying there in the sage, just like kind of groaning. I can't, I don't really feel like I can get up because of how bad my knee hurts. And I'm pretty shaken up. Uh, and then I kind of see my horse just run down there to the bottom of the hill and he kind of stops at the corner and is just kind of running around in circles or whatever. So then the other guy, he gets over there and he almost, he almost rides right by me because I'm like laying there with my eyes closed and I hear a little bit of noise and I'm like, oh crap, here comes that horse. Now he's running back up the hill in a panic and he's going to run over top of me. So I open my eyes and I pick my head up and it's this other guy. And he's, um, at this point, he's going a lot slower on his horse, about 50 feet away. And he's looking around, like trying to find me because he sees I'm not on the horse, right? So he's hollering and then I see it's him and I say, hey, I'm over here. And he sees me and he comes over. He's like, you all right? And it's like, yeah, dude, I think I'm okay. But my knee is like really messed up. So uh, he helps me up and then the cow boss eventually gets over there and they get a truck up there and they get me loaded in the truck. And then uh, it wasn't really, I was, it was getting a little better by the time we got me loaded and got down to the bottom of the hill. And I told the boss, I was like, hey, it's it's feeling better now. Um, I think I'll be okay like to help with the branding or work in a sort gate or something. I just need to do a job where I won't really have to move around a lot for the day. I think it'll be all right. He said, well, it's a, you know, it's a company policy deal. The the corporation that owns the ranch. Anytime something like this happens, we have to take you to the hospital to get a uh, to get checked out. And I guess I got my tetanus shot that day or something like that. But the um, thing is, is the hospital was like two hours away. So the worst part about the whole thing was I was feeling really bad because I pulled the cow boss away uh, from doing the branding, but luckily there were other people there that could step in and they got it all done. And then, uh, sure enough, like it was, it was like a couple torn tendons on my knee. So I was pretty gimpy. I wore a knee brace for like a week, but, um, went back, went back to work the next day and everything was good like that. So that's, uh, that's the story of the time. And once again, he earned his name Band-Aid and he put also me in the hospital. So moral of the story is, cut the barbed wire, pull the barbed wire back, get at least a six foot gap, then go through the barbed wire. Or if you're really feeling brave, hit it at a long trot. Never try to walk through. You would think, you know, like these people that I was working for, they've been doing that all their lives. Like they did it every day. And because in my, in my head, I was scared and it didn't make sense to do it. I thought that, oh, well, no, they, no, I'm going to, I'm going to walk through it. That's going to be better. Nope. I should have listened to the people that knew what they were doing. So, uh, moral of the story, listen to the people who know what they're doing, even though it might go against a little bit of instinct or cut the barbed wire. Just cut the barbed wire. Just cut the barbed wire. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you'd like to see more stories like this, you can become a Carson James Insider. And the way you do that is just by clicking on the link right here. You'll see all the details. Hope you enjoyed it. We will see you next time.